Hello world and welcome back to another episode of Batania where today we're going to be covering everything there is to know about trinkets. Starting off we've got the floral obedience stick. This is made with two living wood twigs and a man of steel ingot. Now all this does is that it takes any sort of either functional or generating flower and it links it straight away to any nearby mana pools. If I take a load of cold blocks here just like this and have them all start activating what can actually happen is I can take uh, my little stick here and I can right click on any mana pool and as you can see they all instantly link to that one automatically instead of me having to use my wand of the forest in order to link them all one at a time. Next up we have the overgrowth seed. Now the overgrowth seed cannot actually be crafted, it can only be found in structures such as dungeons, but what it will do, it will make any flowers, whether it be functional or generating flowers, actually work at two times speed. Next up we have the assembly halo. This is basically going to be a quick and portable crafting table. It's made with a crafting table, three mana steel ingots and a mana pearl. Now when you actually put this up in your inventory, you'll get this little circle around you, you see here. It only comes up when you're holding it in your inventory and when you right click on this crafting table section, it'll bring up the crafting table grid so if we get ourselves some wood here how about we make ourselves a chest just like that now the cool thing about this is that if i go to one of these other tabs as you can see it says that i have made a chest recently the crafting table or this assembly halo is always going to remember the last recipe you put in and then something you can do is right click on one of these squares and it's now going to remember that chest craft so if i now have all these um in all these planks in my inventory and the chest all i have to do is just now right click on the quick point and it's going to automatically craft that chest for me now this can obviously be done for other things as well so if i do doors uh, they can then put this somewhere else and this can be put up to this many different quick slots lastly if you want to remove any of these quick slots all you have to do is left click or shift left click sorry and it will completely get rid of it horn of the wild is up next and this requires one pasture seed and five pieces of living wood now what this is going to do is actually break all vegetation and crops around you in an area but this can also be configured in two extra ways one being the horn of canopy and one being the horn of covering all that is is adding a leaf block to the horn or adding a snow block to the horn now what this is going to do if i actually grab both of these now if I go over into the fields here and I just start holding down the right click, it'll make a noise and everything is going to start breaking around you. It's just a good way of breaking your crops and obviously it gives you all the drops. If we were to use the horn of canopy, it would start actually breaking the leaves as well and actually leave all the crops around. And then the last one works for snow, but obviously we don't have any snow around. Now in the previous episode we've already covered living wood tools but the living wood bow is another type of tool we can use. It's made with three wood living wood twigs and three mana infused string. Now this is going to work the exact same as a regular bow however it will have a little bit more durability but can also be repaired with mana as just like the mana steel tools. Something next which is a little bit strange is the mana blaster. Now this isn't actually a weapon, it's going to be a way of having some sort of portable mana spreader. This is made with the pulse mana spreader, a rune of mana, a mana diamond, one TNT and two living wood. Now this is going to take power from any type of mana holding item in your inventory. In our case we have got ourselves a mana tablet here and it will just basically, you can fire it. It's going to fire much quicker than a actual mana spreader but if you say a mana spreader pulse is one then uh, the portable mana spreader is only going to shoot three quarters of that beam as a mana spreader would now obviously this will just obviously take your mana pool uh, and you can just fire it into that and it'll just take mana from your tablet and put it into the pool this will not damage any mobs the next item is actually going to be some more of a consumable item. This is the Mana Weave Cloth. This is made using four mana infused string, and this can be used to make a set of Mana Weave Armor. Now, the Mana Weave Armor doesn't actually have any sort of defensive values, but it's better at making uh, use of these next uh, items we're going to be covering shortly. So if I just whack all of these on here now and we'll get a full set, this will give us our max amount of bonus when using these next items. Now these next items are going to be called the rods and basically what this mana weave stuff is going to allow us to use less mana when actually using these rods and also they can make some of them a little bit more potent, either give it more damage or slightly more range. 
But before we get to the rods, we have got the Manufactory Halo. This is actually an upgrade from the Assembly Halo. All it requires is obviously the Assembly Halo itself and the Mana Diamond. Now this is going to do everything that's the same as the Assembly one, except it's got a couple of extra things. It can actually auto craft save recipes that are in your uh, obviously saved slots, as well as it can actually compress certain items that are compressible when you are mining. So if we take our chests here as a similar example, oh, I'm going to need that halo there actually go into the crafting table and we will put ourselves some chests in here and we'll save that to a slot now for now nothing's happening but if i the moment i scroll off um the assembly halo or sorry the manufactory halo it's going to start crafting chests down in the bottom of my um hot bar as you can see here so i'm going to scroll off and it's used a little bit of that wood there to auto craft now it does it very very quickly and you can see as i'm just duplicating this it's automatically making more stuff as it's saved so now let's actually get into the rods. The first one is going to be the Rod of the Land. This is made with one living wood twig, one rune of the earth, and one dirt. Now what this is going to do is very simple. It's going to basically just spawn dirt out of thin air. Now this is going to use mana from your mana tablets in your inventory, and it will just place dirt in the world, and it's as simple as that. A simple way of making some sort of scaffolding, I would say. Following this though, we have the Rod of the Depths made with two living wood twigs, a rune of fire and a rune of water. This is the exact same as the Rod of Lands, except that it does it with cobblestone instead. Something a bit more fiery now is the Rod of Hells. This is going to require one living wood twig and a rune of fire and one blaze powder. Now what this is going to do is actually going to create a sort of circle of fire around you. Now this is going to set any living thing around actually on fire. So if we get ourselves some uh, cow eggs here, as you can see they start setting on fire. But obviously it's only inside the circle or on this edge here. Following this, we have the Rod of Plentiful Mantle. This is made using four living wood twigs and a mana diamond. Now, this is going to allow you to use mana and actually see ores through the walls and floors. So if I right click here now, we can see that a so lot of lights now start appearing. Now, each light cluster that is the same color is going to be the exact same ore. So all these green spots are the exact same ore. However, these dots are eventually going to fade away, as you see here. And if you use this again, the dots aren't necessarily going to be the same color you see this selection here they're now blue so it's not the same way of defining things so coal isn't always going to be green per se uh, but each time you use it the clusters will mean the exact same uh, ore if that makes sense Similar to the Rod of Lands, we also have the Rod of the Seas. This is made using one living wood twig, one rune of water, and a water bottle. Now, you probably guess what this already does. This is a way of actually using mana to place water in the world, as you see here. Very, very handy. And this is also something that's going to be good when you're crafting using the Petal Apothecary, as it does manage to refill it. A very useful rod next, the Rod of Shifting Crust, is a way of actually swapping blocks in your environment. Now this is going to require a living wood, two living wood twigs, any type of stone, but we're just going to go for regular old vanilla stone here, and a rune of sloth. Now what this is going to do, as I say, is going to be uh, actually swapping blocks out. So if we actually just right click on, say, this dirt piece here, uh, sorry, shift right click on this dirt, a little item's going to come up, and then we're going to see an area that we can actually do it. Now this works in a plain view, but as you go towards a hillside, it's as you can see it always swap, swaps the top level. Now there is a way of actually sort of switching this around from being less of a cuboid um, sort of thing, but this is going to require the stone of temperance. But as you can see, that's actually locked at this point, so uh, I cannot show it. Uh, we're obviously today we are covering everything that's in black because as we know from previous episodes, everything in green is going to require things from a, a different dimension, which we haven't quite unlocked. And there are still a handful of things we haven't unlocked at this level yet, so we can't show everything off. Um, but yeah, all we can do now, we've got our dirt selected, if we just hold, press right click, sorry, it will start changing that area over time from, up to this point, grass to um, dirt. Now the thing is when it comes to this swapping, all items are going to be used out of your inventory. But as you noticed there, I didn't actually have any dirt in my inventory to make that swap. Now the cool thing is, is using the Rod of Land and the Rod of the Depths, they will actually supply the box necessary in order to make them. So if I wanted to have all of this be dirt, it's actually my Rod of Lands that's supplying the dirt to switch this all out. Now since I'm in creative, I can do uh, cool things like I can actually change this all to be wood if I wanted to, but uh, obviously you you can't do that unless you are actually having that wood in your inventory. 
Now the last rod we actually have to show right now is the rod of the skies. This is me using one living wood twig, one rune of air and a feather. Now what this is going to do is basically going to replace your rockets if you have an elytra. When you right click it's going to use a little banner, a little bit of mana and it's going to send you flying into the sky. Now when you do get flown into the sky you do have a short amount of time where you will take no fall damage uh, but if you're obviously uh, flying in the sky and then say you start using elytra to fly you won't have any fall damage by the time you go to land again so be aware of that. Next up, we have a little bit of an upgrade to the Mana Weave Cloth. If we add this to a Mana Pearl, you actually create the Spell Binding Cloth. Now, this is a way of de-enchanting using a crafting table, um, and it's going to allow you to disenchant any enchants on any tools or armor, as well as curses. So here we have got a Netherite Sword with the Curse of Vanaging, and we have a Netherite Prick Axe with Unbreaking. If we put our Spell Binding Cloth and our Cursed Item in here, as you can see, it's going to allow us to give us our sword. And and this only takes down a little bit of durability in our spell binding cloth so you can use this repeatedly over time if we take our netherite pickaxe with unbreaking we can then take our netherite pickaxe back and it takes slightly more durability the next item is a little bit quirky and that is just a vine ball have you ever wanted to actually climb up something but you didn't have any ladders on you and the vines that are around are just not strong enough to actually pick you up well using nine vines you collect in the environment you can make yourself a vine ball this is a way of actually throwing uh, a ball of vines onto a side and then they'll create these strong vines that you can actually climb up so I'm in creative so it's going to stay in my inventory of course but obviously I've created these vines you just walk up to it no need to jump or anything and you now have a way of climbing it up now there is only a certain amount of distance you can actually throw these even though it is quite far but something you can use with this is actually a slingshot the living wood slingshot is made with four living wood twigs and a rune of air and if you have one of these you can actually use it to fling your slingshots your slime ball in a lot more accurate direction instead of giving it a bit of an arc Next up, we have sort of a poor man's silk touch. The Vitreous Pickaxe is a way of actually picking up glass when you have uh, so maybe placed it in the wrong place. So this is going to require two living wood twigs, one mana steel ingot, and two pieces of glass. Now if we get this and uh, get ourselves some glass here, and I will go into survival mode. Using this pickaxe, we'll be able to break it, and it's actually going to give us our glass back. Something very handy for early game. Now the last item on this list is the World Shaper Sextant. This is made using three living wood twigs and four pieces of mana steel ingots. Now this is just a handy little in-game tool to allow you to create circles. I'm going to do this while flying because it's a little bit easier and this is probably the best way if you had a pillar. Basically if you look at a block and hold right click it's going to create a little fire. That is going to be your center point of a circle. Now as you look out it's going to give you an increase in numbers and this is how many blocks you've gone out in radius. So if I go out here 10 blocks that is going to be a 20 wide circle now when i let go it's going to give us a little cobblestone area here and this is actually going to show us just a sort of ghost outline of where we need to place our blocks and it's going to tell you how many blocks are going to be needed in this case it's going to be 68 and uh I, we can just place these blocks over time in whatever we want and as we place them as you can see that progress bar is going up until we have completed it now, if you want to get rid of this uh, ghost here, all you have to do is shift right click and it will get rid of it again. Now, this was a little bit of a quicker episode today. We covered a lot of interesting little tools here. But if this video helped you out in any way, shape or form, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. It would really help me out and ring the bell button to stay notified when these videos go live. But if you would like to know about all the trinkets you can actually get inside of these and wearable bottles, then click the video on screen now. There's a lot of cool and interesting things you can get from there.